Hi everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today. Hopefully you had a really nice and constructive day so far. Um, just a little bit uh, about what's going to happen in the session. Uh, we're just going to talk about application process a little bit, mention of uh, personal statement and what is best to look for when you thinking of writing your personal statement and also uh, what you should look for when you creating your portfolio advice. Um, just a little bit about me. Um, my name is Lamprini. Um, I've been working at London College of Communication for quite some time now, uh, but I mainly work in student recruitment, which means that I get to uh, do this really nice presentations and talk to people like you about uh, all the possibilities that you can have when you're thinking um, about moving on to, a, um, to do a degree here at uh, London College of Communication, but also uh doing some workshops and some really nice things so we can start thinking to be more creative um i studied at uh, lcc um and i did ba photography uh and i loved it so much so i stayed there and i kept working and today we're going to go through and talk about um all this application and but we'll focus a lot on personal statement and portfolio and at the end you'll be able to ask any questions that you like um, we're going to talk about how to go through the process of uh, doing an application for an undergraduate course at London College of Communication. Um, I know it's a bit um, it's a bit scary to do an application to look for uh, what you should study later on, but hopefully that will help you to calm you down a little bit and just help you to understand that actually it's not that scary. It's just you just need to have a plan and a program and uh, hopefully it will help you to do your application later later on um we're going to start with the talk about the UCAS application so UCAS stands for university and colleges admission service and is how um uh they collect all the information that they need about you can apply through them they have a form you set up an account and uh, then they in charge of setting all the different applications to all the different colleges um, and this is how a lot of students choose to apply because they have a lot of support from UCAS as well um, so if you want if you want to apply for a UK undergraduate courses that's uh, one way to go about it uh, students are there they're UK based um, home students uh, that's the option that um, they um, that you choose to go through and just something to let you know about this is that when you're applying to a creative course it's, uh, um, it's quite a different process compared to other courses such as you know applying for um, bachelor of science or applying for um, any other courses and even maths or literature because we we will look through your qualifications, but we're focusing a lot on your digital portfolio, on your creativity and your personal statement. Um, so the UCAS registration is really easy. It's really UCAS on the, on the website. They have a lot of uh, information on how to move forward and how to do your application, a lot of guides. Um, so it's really straightforward how, how to apply. As I said, you create an account and after that it just moves on to step by step kind of guide. Um, if you're applying through a school or a college, um, they probably would have or would provide you with a buzzword. Uh, that you can uh, put it put it on your application, and that means that your college or school will be able to support you throughout the whole process. Um, but if you're applying as a, an individual applicant, you don't need a password. You can just skip that step and move forward and do your application. You still, I will mention later on that you will still have a lot of support from UCAS as well. Um, so as I said, a, user, a username will be automatically generated and you'll create a password and it will be really important to keep these details because if you are like me that I keep forgetting my passwords and my usernames, I think that's best to keep them somewhere safe. Um, so something, and in, we're going to talk now for international applications and the reason they're a bit different is that they have 
other routes, a different um, variety of routes to go uh, for an application. So if you apply for a course at UAL and London College of Communication, um, you can apply through uh, UAL in-country representatives, uh, UCAS or directly to UAL. So if you choose to uh, apply direct, to do a, a direct entry application, in each course page, um, you can find uh, uh, the form that you can go and up, uh, create your portal, as we call it, the UAL portal. That you, again, it will create your um, your username and your password, and then you can fill your application. So, um, if you would like to apply independently, um, or you don't have a representative that is uh, local to you or close by, you can do so via UCAS or directly to UAL by the website. We have a really big global network. We have students for so many different places and um, if you decide to apply to UL through our network and our global representatives you you gain support um, to find the right course to arranging accommodation getting a visa and arriving in the UK even though even you if you decided to apply through um, UCAS you can, you will still receive uh, post application support from our representatives as well um, but you Throughout the whole process, it's important to know that you will have support from um, either the UCAS, support from your representatives, but also support from us. Because we, after we receive your application, uh, we'll keep send you e emails and a lot of information of what you need to do next. So, what is required is something that probably you're thinking, okay, I know now where to go to do my application. Um, so what do I need to add there? What do I need to uh, make sure that I have the right um, the right material to go and uh, submit my application? And the most important thing is to go through your education and see if you have any, um, when you finish school, um, if you have a certificate, if you have any A-levels, GCSEs or even BTEC diplomas. There's so many different uh, certificates that you can go through even if they're international based certificates, uh, we would need to see that. We, you need to have them on hand and um, you that will also help you while you're doing your application because you know exactly that I've got the certificates so I can put them down on my application. And then when, if somebody um, from the college asks you that we would like to see your certificate, you already have it ready and you can send it forward. Um, Personal statement is one of the most important parts of your applications. Um, it says we hear we say four thousand characters or forty-seven lines. What I always will go through with a personal statement later on, but don't. Uh, that's how that's the technical aspect of the personal statement. So that means when you go into uh, to submit your personal statement on UCAS or your UCAS application or another application, that's how uh, how many kind of lines and characters it allows you to uh, submit. Um, and the next bit is reference. Uh, reference is usually from your teacher. It could be if you're applying independently, um, it could be a conduct that uh, uh, somebody that you worked with, um, somebody, it could be even your employee. So it's like a professional reference to say that um, they they know you and just talk about your personality and your, um, you, what you're currently doing and basically to promote you to us that's what a reference is all about um when you putting down a reference that means that you don't have to go and ask for somebody to write a reference that you can submit is that you need to have the details so you should go and talk to somebody uh, that you're thinking of uh, asking to do your reference to see if they're okay with it and then you can get the name, uh, your the job description, and the email address, and that's what you put on your on UCAS or anywhere else that you that need the reference. That means that when we receive the application, or you, UCAS receives the application, uh, we will then send an email to the, re the referee to ask for your reference, and they need to write it down, and then we'll get back the reference. So that's the only thing that you need to do is to get the details. 
and of course just ask for uh, permission first because uh, you don't want them to surprise with something that they don't know uh, and I'm sure you find people that they will like to help you and do your reference and if you are in a college or a school your teachers are, are all very aware of it. <clears throat> so now we're moving into the personal statement and then we'll talk about portfolios and these are I would say the two most important parts of your application. Um, some college, some courses that don't require portfolios, so your personal statement you should consider as your main part of your portfolio. <clears throat> so the personal statement is all about you and your personality and what you're interested in. Um, is whether you're applying to a course which asks for a portfolio or a course that doesn't require a portfolio is your your voice is your personal statement uh, to say that this is who I am this is what I'm interested in this is what I've done and this is the reason why I want to move to this subject area and to this course um, so is, it is the chance it is the chance for you to speak and to talk about your um, your future and uh, your your ideal um opportunities that you're looking forward in the future and why a course in arts will be able to help you or even if you're interested in doing photography for example or illustration why you're interested in this area um, and that's where you should mention everything so getting started to do a um, personal statement it might be a bit scary as I said again um it might be something that you're thinking oh, i'm not really good at writing uh but the important thing is that we're not going to look at if you're really good at writing we're going to look at you basically and that's what you need to consider so do you, when you start putting together your application you should look for, for we should look for this thing so don't get too stuck in the past um we obviously want to know what you've done in the past but we mainly want to see how you're going to evolve in, in, in the future and how the course is going to help you um so you should consider the the subject area that you're applying as i mentioned so that means that because you chose the subject area and this course to, to study you're thinking that this is how it's going to help you in, in the future um, and what skills are you bringing in and how you can uh, evolve in the course with these skills. So these are kind of the things. Say, so put a question, before starting putting down and sitting down to write your personal statement, just uh, make some questions, do the questions and say, what, are, uh, what do I look forward in the future? Um, how this course is gonna help me? And what skills am I bringing in? It's all about you, and that's the most important thing. We're not looking on uh, anything else to see if you're a writer, because you might, yes, you might apply to a course that you want to be a writer, but the, the whole point is to see exactly who you are. Um, so it's all about you. Um, we want to know what attracts you to the subject area. We want to know um, how do you match the selection criteria. So that means that um, with the influences that you bring in, so the interests, your passions, how can we that match um, in the subject area that you've decided to go, in the course that you've decided to go, and to make sure that this is the right place for you. Um, and who are you and what are your opinions? These are really important things to, um, to have in mind when thinking of doing your personal statement. Um, so, Putting it together, it's really important to have a structure, so consider the structure. Um, and just you know, be, be logical with your approach. And as we said, ask yourself questions. Um, so that will help you also to stay on track and you won't kind of uh, go on uh, and just talk about things that might not be that relevant. So give it a context, make it relevant to the subject area. So as we said, you might think, to study in film so why are you interested in film and uh, what makes you uh, what drives you 
what inspires you and what you're looking forward to in the future to do. Um, and assure you are comfortable talking about your statement. So it's really important, first of all, to when you've written your statement, to make sure you you read it again. And especially if you you might um, have to go on an interview, you might not have to go on an interview. A lot of courses, um, they don't require an interview. That depends on the situation that you're coming from. You know, they, there's a different uh, application process. Um, so it's really important to know what you're talking about in your personal statement. So because this is how um, we can see and we can, of course, link it into your portfolio. And it's really important to uh, try and link, link it with your portfolio to say, that basically that you've worked with, um, you collaborated with uh, somebody and this is what we created, as you can see on my portfolio. So we could kind of go back and forward and see and, make, and kind of understand where you're coming from. Um, so the final touch is, um, this is really, really important. It's really important to, after you finish it, to read it again and go through to see if there are any errors. So when we say errors, is just to see if there's any, if it's grammatically okay, um, if it's uh, if the, um, the sp a spell check, because um, it's it's not it's, as I said, we're not looking to have you know the, you for you to be the best writer. We understand that maybe your um, English is not your first language, um, but it's good to be able to see if there are any spells, uh, any spell mistakes that you've done or something that doesn't quite look right, it's good to see and, and see if you can change it, just to make it a little bit more clear um, and tidy. So ask for someone to just have a look through, see if they can understand your point, see if they, what they see is coming through to them and understand um, what you want to say. It's, so it's really important to go through with somebody. It could be your, somebody, a friend, it could be a family, it could be anyone that you trust and that you can talk about and say how you can change some things in your personal statement. Don't use big words. A lot of people tend to use really big and complicated words in the personal statements, but you don't have to, to do that. Um, we're not going to really get impressed by the, the use of different uh, words and different really big, complicated words. We just want to see exactly what your, um, your voice and we want to know what's going on. And we're going to look on, as I mentioned before, um, the, what you're bringing in and what you look in your future. So practice makes perfect. Read it aloud. It's really good to read things aloud so you can hear it. It's completely different from when you're just reading it without uh, any sound because when you're reading it aloud, you can hear exactly how um, it will, will sound if somebody's reading it. Um, and to see if that kind of have your voice. So if you think that it's not, doesn't feel right to you, then you can just kind of changing it and change some bits that doesn't write bits that does not write to you. Um, and take your time. As soon as you have uh, a lot of your um, the questions that we said, as soon as you have everything that you need to put down, um, just to make sure that everything that you want to say is there as a start with bullet points and then go on to put this bullet points in a text format and that means that you know you can go back and forward and see oh I missed this point maybe I should bring it now and that will help you a lot and you don't have to rush it uh, but it's good not to leave it last minute um, which is it might make you quite anxious about it and it might not be as good as you want it to be and it might you may need to redraft it so you've done your personal statement, you fill your application. So what happens next? Um, so the uh, when you're doing UCAS undergraduate application, um, you are able to submit five different choices, and that could be different uh, courses in the same uh, university. Could be five different courses in the five different universities. Um, it's up to you what you are interested to see. So it's good before doing your application 
to uh, have a look on your uh, on the courses on the subject areas that you might be interested and may just write down the the courses that you might be thinking if even if you're struggling a little bit to find the right course maybe to write the things that really interest you and that they, you think that this is maybe the area that I would like to go to and then according to that you can start researching and it will help you to find out uh, the different courses that there might be um, you might be interested to do so research is a key here so um, once you submitted your application you will receive a confirmation uh, from UCAS with your personal ID and this will enable you to sign in to the UCAS track and this is where you can see what happens with your application process so it will show you um, if uh, the universities have um, uh, have any feedbacks from the universities if they requested any documents from you or portfolios and at the end of course if you get an offer as well so it's really important to have these details uh, all the time with you uh, then we will send you an email with your UAL portal, portal login uh, where we might request some more qualifications or um, or your portfolio work. Um, these are some dates that you should definitely um, um, have a look at. This is uh, at the timeline of your application. Uh, so you can see you can see now that the deadline for 2021 was on the 29th of January to uh, for the UCAS application. Um, we still uh, accept applications. Um, so if you want to apply for 2021, you can do so. We, we still look uh, through the applications. Uh, but if you're interested to apply for 2022, uh, then the UCAS application and the applications for that academic year will open again at the end of September, beginning of October. So keep an eye of what's happening uh, about that time. Then you can see all the different areas that we're going into. And the most important thing is to know that after you've sent your, uh, we've sent you an email um, with uh, your UL portal login, all the details that you need, uh, we will send you an email request if 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 you do uh, uh, if you have um, submitted an application to study course that um, requires a portfolio as part of your uh, assessment, um, then uh, we will send you an email with everything that you need to do in order to upload a portfolio. Uh, and in London College of Communication, uh, we are accepting digital portfolios. And uh, in a lot of places nowadays, it will be digital portfolio mainly. Um, so then you have, after you you have um, received the email with a request to upload a portfolio, you have uh, two weeks. Um, uh, you will receive it after um, between two weeks or so after applying. So keep an eye on uh, when you are going through the process. It's really good to keep an eye on your emails almost every day, to be honest. Um, it's good to have that kind of, to know exactly what's happening, so you won't miss anything. Um, and then, of course, April, you, um, that's another day to uh, month to know that this is where, when if you have accepted your offer to uh, come and study with, um, with us, uh, then you can apply for UAL accommodation. And, uh, then of course we have the um, between February and May is the interviews that take place, but not all of, uh, all of you will be um, required to attend an interview. We'll we'll see you. Uh, we will make a decision according to your portfolio and your personal statement, or just your personal statement in your application. Um, and then you can see the other options that that they're going through. I'm not going to go through all the timeline. Uh, I'm just going to leave it there for a little bit while I talk before the next bit of this session so you can have a look. But another thing is to know that UCAS on the website, they also have key dates that you can go and have a look and see what's going on and also information for each key date. So the next bit that we're going um, gonna to talk about is the portfolio, uh, which is a really, really important part of your um, application. 
not all of you might require to submit a portfolio, um, but a lot of our courses, um, such as photography, illustration, graphics, uh, they require to see uh, a portfolio in order for us to um, review your application. So I'm going to move on to the next bit. Um, portfolio, I think, is one of the most scariest bits in an application for prospective students, and that is because it's how intimate it is and how um, you you think that this is something so important which it is so important to apply that um, that you might be scared of oh what should I choose to, do, to show which work should I uh, choose to show and would that be good enough would that represent what I want to show so we're just going to talk about a little bit uh, some uh things to look um to look for when you are uh, looking to create your portfolio some things that you should pay attention and obviously to um maybe help you to understand um that it's not that scary again but it's just really important to don't rush it and just pay attention on all of the things that you like to include a portfolio is something that as we like to say that is a a window to your personality, to who you are, to who, what you're interested, in, and the ideas that you like to generate and bring forward. Um, so that's why we consider um, the portfolio to be the one of the most important or the most important part of your application. And so personality is paramount. Um, this is what we're looking through our portfolio. It, it tells us a lot about the person's personality. It tells us a lot about uh, your interests, your passions, your um, your ideas, your skills. So that's what we're looking to see. Um, we're not expecting you to be professionals. You're coming to studying an undergraduate course. Of course, we're not expecting you to have the more professional work. We just want to see um, the uh, what drives you and how you develop ideas so a portfolio still should be professional and when we say that to be when you uh, structure your portfolio it should be tidy and plain and professional because you 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 do apply for a course and that's something that it will help you later on as well when you're looking for internships for uh, applying for a job that is good to know that when you have a nice well-made portfolio, uh, even if you're still at the start of your career, that will help you later on to understand that this is the way to go. So um, we want to see your passion, your enthusiasm is so important to us to see these elements, to see how you uh, developed in uh, an idea and how developed through trying different things, trying different um, mediums. And that should, by, we can see your enthusiasm through this um, kind of process that you're going through. Um, so it's to reflect your interests and inspirations, and of course your skills and your technical abilities. Um, it's really important to consider the audience, and when we say audience, is that who is going to see your portfolio so you are applying in the undergraduate course so you should go through and say okay i'm applying for illustration uh so what should i include there so if you're thinking of applying for illustration but you have worked for example um photography and drawing and sketches that's good that's we like to the variety uh but it's really important to know that um the if you're applying, for example, example um, photography, and we only see drawings or sketchings, is that kind of is the wrong? It's not a wrong, but it's not what we're looking to because it doesn't tell us anything about your interests and why you want to move into a photography course. We might think that oh, you're interested in illustration or you're interested in graphics, maybe. Um, so it's really important to consider the audience. So. You're applying on this subject area, so your your audience, your um, portfolio should reflect this subject area that you are applying and you're interested in. Um, so it's really we, we're not 
looking on viewing your portfolio in a chronological kind of order, um, like this is what I did on 2015 and this is 2016, we just want to see, um, we want to see a narrative. So that means that you have maybe three projects that you'd like to show us. So start with what you, how you want to say a story that you might start with this project, you created this outcome and this led, that kind of project led to another project and then kind of to another project. That's how we would like to see the narrative going, that through projects you develop your skills, but also your ideas and your um, your interests that you, because you work with this material in one of the projects uh, that made you think differently and in the next project you thought, okay, this is the, my main way, the main way that I would like to produce my work. That's how we talk about narrative. So it's good to think about it as a good book or a nice piece of music. Um, and of course, consider how do we read uh, the layouts? Would it be a larger image is more important? Are these the final outcomes? Um, are the items close together linked? Um, so this is things, these are things that you should consider when you put in your portfolio together. Um, it's really important to think about format and it's really important to look uh, on each course requirements um, because each course will have different portfolio requirements because you might like, want to apply for um, different courses throughout, you know, as we said, uh, graphics, it could be film, it could be photography. So even if you apply for three these three different courses, uh, but they come from three different subject areas, uh, they will have uh, different requirements. Even courses in the same subject area will have three different portfolio requirements. So it's really important to have a look on the course page and see what each course requires for each portfolio. We make sure to up update our um, our web uh, website and our course page pages according to what we're looking into the portfolios. Everything is there. Uh, we're doing our decision making is according to what's on the website so all the information that we're giving this this is how we kind of um pay attention and that's this is how we review your portfolio so that's why it's so important to have a look on the course page um and we mentioned mentioned before opt for what suits the subject area so as we said if you interesting in film and or animation make sure that you have work that is relevant to that subject area um so, and it's important to have uh, to photograph your work in high quality uh, against a clear background. When you say high quality, I, I understand, you know, not all of us have the best equipment, um, but even if you're using your phone, even if you're using something, you know, to uh, photograph your work, just make sure that it's good quality, that is not pixelated, uh, we can see the details and the background is not really messy, not messy, but not really, um, clutter with a lot of different things that it will distract us from your main piece of work. So a clear background is the best way to go. It doesn't have to be white, but it could be anything, or a wall in your house that has nothing else, or um, even on the sofa there might be one colour and you can photograph your work. Um, so it, that's what we mean with high quality and clear background. Um, so the another really important part of the process of putting together your portfolio is balance and perfection. Um, we're not looking for uh, perfect portfolios. As we said, you know, the, this is we we're expecting prospective students to apply to these courses that they're coming in to improve the skills, to improve their knowledge, and move forward into the career that they like to go. So we're not expecting you to be to have the perfect portfolio. And a lot of times, the these imperfections, this not, these things, these parts of your portfolios that they're you might think they're a bit messy, or you might think that they're not as clear and professional as they should be. Um, sometimes it tells us a lot more about your process. Um, one 
part that a lot of people uh, think that they shouldn't include is a sketchbook, but we definitely recommend including uh, sketchbook pages um, and include your research development. That's tell us exactly how you've evolved your idea. So it is important. Process is is really important as uh, as important as the final piece is. So make sure to let us know how you developed your idea and you work through and don't worry about being perfect but mainly just to tell us exactly what you wanted to tell us um, through your portfolio um, present research development and outcome these are the three key, three key words that you should all have in your head when you are putting your for, portfolio together um, and of course, if you're using secondary sources, uh, if you're using photographs or um, images that uh, help you through your process and help you through uh, your uh, project, make sure to credit the artist so we know that will show us exactly your influences as well. But it will also clarify that this is not your image, this is somebody else uh, that helps you to create the final outcome that you can see later on. Um, and be mindful of presentation um again we mentioned images should be high res as i said we just want to be clear enough to be able to understand uh, you know to see your your work without any discretion distractions uh, and that means um if they're not pixelated if you when you are uh, when you have your um your image on your on your screen and you can zoom in and you can see that it's still quite clear and it still tells the whole story that's high res for us and we can see your work um also we're going to talk later on about um what we use as um our um the, the platform for you to upload your portfolios and uh, then we'll let you know a, a little bit about the technical aspect of a digital portfolio um so be decisive so this is we talked about um what you should include we talked about how the format the balance of imperfections um personality and this is the last bit of your uh, of your portfolio um creating your portfolio process so be decisive that means that we want to see um your ability to edit uh, we would love to see all the work that you have created through uh, the years that you have been creating, um, and uh, but it's not um, it is not as easy as we would like to be. So it's really important to write it down and just include things that you want us to see. That means that include thing uh, include projects and the work that you feel really proud. Uh, that you think that this is my best work. Um, so when you're looking on putting projects into and um, images on your portfolio, just think, oh, I'll, I do like this. I really, uh, I think it really works with my idea, um, and it really shows my strengths and uh, my interest. That's why you should think about when you trying to decide the work. Um, and we we'll love to see a variety of projects. So um, I would say, if you have two to three projects or even up to four projects that should be okay three projects is the main is, um, number that we kind of say uh, but three to four projects um, would be perfect for us to understand um, how you uh, developed and how you experimented with different ideas and different techniques if you don't have that many projects it's fine it's uh, don't worry about it we just just make sure on the uh, other projects that you're showing uh, showcasing to us to uh, be a little bit more um to explaining a little bit more and just makes us see exactly what you want us to see through your 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 portfolio and your ideas so it's important to include work that you can talk about it's really important to include work that you are comfortable and that you uh you'll be able to explain it um your process and your idea development because we will see um we will uh, we'll figure out if you added something that it might have been to fill the gap because if we see that you spend a lot of time to talk about you know 
you spend uh, you, you put effort to explain each project and then you put something to say oh i just i just put it there just to fill the gap just to make it look bigger um as a portfolio uh we will kind of figure it out so it's important to edit and to, to put things that you're really proud and that you can explain and talk about so show us what you love that's most important thing to think um don't don't kind of assume that we want to see specific things because there's not not something specific that we want to see we just want to see you and that's the important thing of your portfolio and your personal statement we're not expecting you to put specific things on your portfolios we're just expecting it to be in a, a kind all the things that we mentioned before so it will be we didn't talk about you know we do, we're not expecting you to put specific context in there we're just expecting to be in a format that you'll be able for us to understand who you are and how, what you like to do in the future and what you bring into the course so just never assume what we want to see just put exactly what just show us what you are who you are and what you love and that's the important things of your your application and the personal statement and portfolio so I mentioned before about digital portfolios. I think nowadays that's the way to go <laughs> for everyone. Uh, we've been doing digital portfolios for about three years now and it has worked really well. So it is it follows the same elements of physical portfolio, but it even gives you it gives you more opportunities to uh, lay out your work exactly how you want it to sh uh, be shown. Um, the, uh, you will receive email from us to, uh, with the guidance, with all the technical, technical elements of it as well, um, including a number of images, format and size limitations. You can submit images, audio and video, and of course you can add um, hyperlinks to more work. I would like to kind of clarify that, you know, we, we want to see work on your portfolio uh, that you spend a little bit of time to put together but if you want to show us something extra um that uh, it relates to the projects that you've done uh feel free to include hyperlinks as well um we using our platform is pebblebud um you will receive e um an email with uh, your login details and your your temporary password that you can change later on um and it's an online tool which you can upload additional uh, requirements for your application, and that is um, a portfolio. So uh, if you're applying for different courses, even if you apply for photography and a photojournalist documentary photography, you will have to you will have to upload two different portfolios. Uh, if you're applying even for five different courses in uh, LCC, you will still have to upload five different portfolios. So there will be a different tab on uh, on the Pebblepad to tell you that this is uh, the core, this is the where you submit the for illustration, this is where you submit for interaction design arts. So that's kind of you know you will have to submit different portfolios. Uh, so make sure that. Uh, you the portfolio that you want to submit um for interaction desires is in the interaction design arts uh tab on the pebble pad and the same for illustration and the same for other courses you will receive different emails for each course that you have applied with all the details about your portfolio so it's it's good to keep an eye on your emails as we said before um pebble pad is really straightforward is um to see it as um you could see it as even as a PowerPoint kind of presentation, or if you could see it as a blog. Um, you, as I said, you upload images. You can upload um, different types of images, different types of audio, and types of um, video files, as well as using text to talk about your work. Um, so make sure to uh, look at the, uh, all the details in the the email that you will receive from us, but also on our website that we have lots and lots of information about it. And that's kind of, um, that's mainly what uh, we wanted to talk about today, about the applications, uh, the application process, 
personal statements and portfolios and I hope kind of put you at ease that it's not that difficult it's not that scary um you just have to be a little bit have some structure and make sure to prepare any research before you um sit down and apply for the course that you the, or the courses that you want to apply um if you looking for more advice um have a look on our website we have lots of information there as well and also a lot of information about portfolios in there um we now can move on to questions um make sure that you can take down these details as well i'll leave the slide on for uh, for you so you can take down the um all the details and if you have any other if you have haven't written down your questions yet you can put them on the on the box on your control panel and i'm happy to take any questions now Thank you, Lamprini, for that informative uh, talk and all that useful advice about application, personal statement and portfolio. We have a few questions rolling in, so we'll do our best to sort of work through them. Um, we've got members of staff in the background typing away as well. So the first question is, in your personal statement, can you talk about transferable skills gained from experiences, anything you've done that doesn't relate to the degree um, that you've applied to study? Yeah, um, that's something, that's the place to, um, to write it. It could be um, anything that you think could support your applications, even if you started as a, if you, even if you worked, um, it could be working with somebody, you know, to gain experience, uh, even if you if, if it wasn't relevant to the courses that you are currently studying, but you realize that through this experience that you gain, it really helps you to understand and make you understand also that it will help you throughout your course. So yeah, definitely include it. I would say in, on your personal statement, it, include everything that you, not, just the, don't include everything that you've done in your life because we have that limitation, but think of it as um, maybe the best moments of uh, or best experiences of your life kind of thing, top highs of your life so far and what helped you and to understand that this is where I want to go forward, this is what I want to do, even if it's something that is not relevant or subject area. Uh, but it really makes you understand that you wanted to go to university, but also to go to this area um, and to try different things. Yeah, definitely. Um, even if you, you know, you can say that you're interested in film because I've been going to the cinema, I've been working in the cinema maybe, or, um, you know, I've, uh, or I've been watching a lot of films and or, I, for example, gain a lot of my inspiration through cinematography and films uh, or even listening to music sometimes. So that's kind of the elements that you can incorporate into your uh, personal statement. Just make sure that they are experiences that they help you see and understand where you want to go in the future. I hope that kind of helps to answer that question. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, if you already have a physical portfolio, can you photograph that and upload it to Pebblepad? Or do you have to create a new portfolio altogether? Um, I would say yes, that would be okay. Um, if you um, just make sure that, you know, the uh, you read again the, uh, the course pages, um, and make sure that the portfolio requirement because our portfolio requirements are also a lot of them they're specific to um for, for applying as well as a digital portfolio as we've been doing quite a long time now but you can take um you can definitely photograph your physical uh, portfolio um or even better scan it if you are able to do so if not it's fine with just uh, um photographing it but make sure that the images are clear again we talked about you know the narrative and if that exists in your physical portfolio then you can use the same order to uh, include it on your um, digital portfolio as well um, so just consider these elements that it is a digital portfolio follows the same element as a, a physical portfolio but there's some limitation as well as you know the um, well, the sizes, uh, how many images you can include, and also each course requirements. 
but of course you can you know you can photograph it um just make sure that everything is as we say clean and tidy and um just in a clear background lovely now in regards to contextual study uh, it context contextual pardon me um statements how much should you write about each piece of work um, is a couple of lines enough or should you write a whole sort of paragraph or a page? Um, I would say if it's two lines uh, enough for you, that's enough for us. Um, I won't say a whole, you know, so maybe about four lines or so, that would be good. But if you need more, that's, you know, we don't have a limitation of it, but I will say keep it uh, clear and simple. Uh, and also, again, we talked about editing. So if you make sure that it's not too long as a context, you know, if you're describing what you've been uh, you've been doing, if you want to describe each image that you're putting, you're uploading it uh, on um, on your digital portfolio, that is just uh, is right on point, and you want to say exactly what you want to say, and um, maybe up to even if it's up to 10 lines that should be okay but i will say just keep it short and simple as much as you can um but it's, at the end of the day it's up to you how uh, much you want to say um and just make sure that you edit it and it's um it's just right on the point great uh, now the next question is: If you if you're looking to apply for graphic branding and identity, yet you haven't done um, any graphic or graphics or branding um, projects before, what should you include in your portfolio? Um, that's a really specific question. Um, so the if you're applying for graphics, um, but I, I don't, I, I could just answer a little bit better, I think, if I knew a little of the background of uh, what you've been up to and what you've been doing, but you can, um, I will say, use the work that you've already have. Um, if you have photography, uh, use that. Um, if you've done any filmmaking, you know, video making, you can use that as well as um, illustration and, um, or any other elements that you have created. Just think of it when you're applying for graphics and there's no graphics experience beforehand or you haven't created any graphics beforehand. Our, our courses are quite open-minded when it comes to um, creating projects and work. Uh, just think of it, go through the course page and see what they've been doing in their courses uh, and just try to see the work that you have, have already or you've been doing and see how you can relate it onto the course and what you've then been up to in the course. So that means that, yes, you might not have the graphics experience, but maybe you have done some branding. Um, it could be commercial photography. It could be doing a video uh, about, um, again, something commercial as well, or it could be just, even if it's not commercial, we want to see what you've been producing. Um, but then, because we haven't seen any graphics, make sure on your personal statement or even on your actual portfolio to let us know uh, that this is your interest, that graphics is your interest. Um, just that something that came up in my head, just make sure that in your personal statement, you don't mention a specific course because you will be applying to different courses and probably you will be applying to different universities. So make sure to be general, but you can talk about the subject area. So if you're interested in graphics, you can talk about it uh, without mentioning the course that you want to apply, uh, which could be your first choice that you want to put down. But um keep it general when it comes to personal statement so this is where you can mention the your interest in the graphic uh, and branding area uh, and the industry as well as your portfolio if you have no graphics experience hope that's okay lovely thank you very much the next question is is it important to write detailed explanation of how the work was done in the description of the digital portfolio um not really um what we're interested 
when when we see your portfolio and we see um your sketchbook that's when the sketch a sketchbook comes in so you have produced an, uh, some work you have shown us maybe your final outcomes and then you show us your kind of your idea development of course sketchbooks they can be huge they can be a lot of different pages so it's really important to choose uh, the pages that they focusing exactly on what you're showing us when the final outcomes when it comes to using text to explain it we're now looking a lot and exactly what you've done we just want to know um, your interest um, what your inspiration behind your project uh, what uh, maybe you can say um, that I tried this it didn't work so I moved there but it really helped me they kind of think that it didn't work out it really helped me to move forward and that's what you can see as my final outcome i will say don't get to a lot a lot of details to explain exactly what you've done um mainly focusing on things that maybe you, they're not that obvious on your images and you would like to um support it by text so you definitely think your the text bit of the digital digital portfolio as a support element to your um, the the work that you are showing us to the images or video that you might show us um, that there might be something there that you want to say more uh, but just make it make sure that it's not um, that is simple and short uh, so we will not look into you know exactly all the technical aspects of it uh, but if there is one thing that you realize that this is i don't know maybe you're doing um darkroom photography and that's what you've been doing and you realize that this is my interest mainly and that's how i use specific process in the darkroom that i really uh, it really helped me then you can mention it there uh but not yeah i think that's uh we're mainly looking for uh, um your inspirations and uh what kind of drove you into creating this project and your idea development. Okay, and we shall move on to our last question. Um, and this is, is it important to include uh, live drawings, for example, in an animation portfolio, or should you only include final pieces? Um, you you can include um, live, live drawings. Um, I know that this course requires specific amount of live drawings. Um, so make sure to check and check the course page as well. Um, if you don't like drawings that really, you know, for example, animation, uh, even illustration and this kind of course in anywhere, a life drawing is quite important and it helps you to understand um, a movement, a format um, and help you to understand how to create your work. Um, but we mainly want to see projects again it's really really important to understand that we want to see idea development that's the key word um that we want to see um that you had an idea um you try it you did some life drawing and then maybe you moved on doing something else um and then you, you tried um this was your inspiration um and that's my final outcome or it could be in any other way that's one example of an order that you can use um, but make sure that you don't just fill your, your portfolio with just life drawing 